Sozin is one of the most important Fire Lords in Fire Nation history. He changed the world tenfold, and in this video, I'm going to explain why that is as I go over his entire timeline and his life. Before we start, there are major spoilers for all Avatar content, so you've been warned. Now let's get started. Sozin was born into royalty in the Fire Nation, and during his youth, he watched as the elders in his family ruled as Fire Lord, and he knew from a young age that he was going to take on that role later on down the road. Sozin was an extremely powerful firebender from a very young age, due in large part to his status as prince. He was able to have the best firebending training, making him exceed well past his peers, including his best friend named Roku. Sozin and Roku did everything together while growing up, the best friends even sharing a birthday. Sozin was always more confident than Roku, and while growing up, he was a much better bender. One day when they were messing around, Sozin took Roku down with the help of a tree root, but before Roku fell, Sozin caught his friend. Now just putting my own thoughts immersed in the facts that this video is based around, the tree root I noticed is very important because it's foreshadowing for the future. I want you to remember Roku's words of, the tree root did all the work, and we'll come back to that later on in the story. That same day, Sozin encouraged Roku to say something to the girl he liked, but Roku choked and lay on the ground, and as he did so, Sozin picked up grass and placed it on his best friend's face. When Sozin turned 16, he shared a birthday party with Roku, and it was a magnificent event with loads of important people present. As they walked out, Roku fell, and as always, Sozin was there to save him and pick him back up. Unlike normal, Sozin was not the center of attention that night, but rather Roku was, as he was told that he was the Avatar. Everybody bowed down to Roku, and Sozin looked on confused, but then paid his respects to his best friend, though he was the last to kneel. Sozin's friendship dynamic with Roku was changed forever after that night. Sozin was no longer the more successful and more powerful one, as Roku now took on the role of arguably the most powerful human in the world. Before Roku left to master the elements, he told Sozin about his concerns, and Sozin thoughtfully cheered him up by giving him his royal headpiece. Roku did not accept it at first, as it was meant for the royal family, but Sozin insisted. The two then bowed to one another, and for the first time, they were equals, something that, as I said, changed their friendship dynamic forever, and for the rest of time, this would eat away at Sozin. This, along with many other things, changed the man Sozin once was, and he became a more ruthless person without his friend Roku there to balance him out. Sozin eventually took the throne, taking his father's place as Fire Lord. He ruled with an iron fist, and did not hold back when it came to making tough decisions. Sozin's grandson Iroh attributed his quest for power to jealousy of the Avatar's immense strength, a feeling that only grew as Sozin immersed himself in the role of Fire Lord and put ever more importance in power and influence. For 12 years, Sozin ruled the Fire Nation like this, and after 12 years, Sozin was finally reunited with Roku, who was now a fully realized avatar. Right away, Roku noticed the difference in his friend, as Sozin told Roku that his subjects normally bow before meeting him, but Sozin still had a soft spot for Roku despite his jealousy of him, and he told Roku that he was the exception. The two then embraced and were still best friends, picking up right where they left off. Not too long after that, Sozin was asked to be Roku's best man, as he married the very girl that Sozin encouraged him to talk to during their youth. Having Roku back in his life as they planned for the wedding, Sozin was a bit more tame and a lot less ruthless. The two friends looked to the future with optimism. However, during the ceremony of the wedding, Sozin came to the realization that being tame was not going to make the Fire Nation bigger and stronger, and he formed his own vision for the future. He pulled Roku aside at the ceremony, and here, Sozin hoped to blend his innocent friendship with Roku and the ruthless man the last 12 years had formed in him, and he proposed to Roku that together, the two of them could do anything, and he pointed out how lucky it was that two such powerful people were so close. Sozin said that because the Fire Nation was in such a time of wealth and peace, they should share that with the rest of the world, expand, conquer, and turn the four nations into one empire ruled by himself and Roku. Roku immediately shut him down, however, and said that he didn't want to hear any more. Sozin asking was merely a courtesy, however. He had every intention of going ahead with his plan with or without Roku. He expanded to the Earth Kingdom, creating many colonies, including the very first Fire Nation colony named Yu Dao. This made Roku burst into Sozin's throne room and yell at him, and Sozin asked how he dare address his Fire Lord in this disrespectful way. He told Roku that his loyalty is with the Fire Nation, and anything else made him a traitor. 
Roku told Sozin not to challenge him, told him it was over, and began to walk away. But Sozin, who had always resented the fact that Roku became greater than he was, attacked Roku behind his back. Roku destroyed Sozin in a fight, and in the process, he destroyed his throne room. He decided to spare Sozin in the name of their past friendship, but he left warning Sozin that if he stepped out of line again, it would lead to his permanent end. As Roku left, Sozin hung his head, humiliated and defeated. Sozin went on to rule the Fire Nation ruthlessly, but he learned to be patient, and he became as patient as he was clever. He did not see Roku again for 25 years after their last encounter, both because Sozin was too ashamed to lose to his old friend again, and because he was busy planning for the future. He learned that a comet was coming within the next 12 years, something that would give all firebenders an insane amount of power. One night, however, he looked over the water to Roku's island, and even from 100 miles away, he could feel it rumbling and could see the smoke perfectly. Sozin rode to the island on his dragon, and he asked Roku if he needed a hand putting a stop to the volcano. Roku of course accepted, happy to see his old friend again after so many years. Together they fought the volcano, and as they did so, Sozin almost fell but was caught by Roku, just as all those years ago, Sozin did not let Roku fall. The two then tried to escape, but Roku breathed in toxic gas and fell to the ground. He reached out a hand, begging for Sozin's help, but Sozin told Roku that with him gone, all his plans were suddenly possible. He said he had a vision for the future, got on his dragon, gave Roku one last look, and left Roku for dead. Roku died that night, but Sozin did not bat an eye because he was busy with his plans for the future. He made the Fire Nation stronger, he recruited more soldiers, and was very patient. And when the time finally came, 12 years after Roku's death, the Kamen arrived and Sozin used its power to start what would become a 100 year war. And even worse, he used the Kamen's power to wipe out all of the Air Nomads, because he knew that the next Avatar would be an airbender in the Avatar cycle. However, though Sozin was successful in wiping out all of the Air Nomads, he left one the most important one, the Avatar, who was a young boy named Aang. Sozin spent the rest of his life searching for the Avatar, but before dying, he said that this was a waste of his life and time. Ironically, he floated right over a frozen Aang while searching for the Avatar on a Fire Nation boat, but Sozin of course never knew this fact. But rewinding a bit and going back to the foreshadowing that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, specifically the scene where Roku says that Sozin only won because the tree root helped him. This was perfect foreshadowing for what was to come, as Sozin could only start the war with the help of the comet. So basically, he only wins a fight if he has help from something, either the tree root or the comet, meaning that the tree root is a metaphor for the comet in the future. That very comment later went on to be known as Sozin's Comet, and was something that occurred every century. After wiping out the Air Nomads, Sozin began his invasion of the Earth Kingdom, then came the attacks of the Water Tribes. Thanks to the icy terrain and the large armies it had, the Northern Water Tribe held its own, but the Southern Water Tribe was not as lucky. They were greatly weakened, and were the victims of constant raids for many many decades. Sozin eventually went on to have a son named Azulan, who was now prince and heir to the throne once Sozin passed. Sozin is also known for a much smaller battle that is often overshadowed by Sozin's comet, but in the Battle of Han Chui, he was applauded for his magnificent display of skill and military cunning. Even though his army was outnumbered, he cleverly calculated his advantages. He saw that the enemy was downwind, and he knew that there was a drought, meaning that when Sozin made his move, the enemy's defenses burned to a crisp in minutes. Sozin also fortified the Fire Nation capital by designing a new road from the harbor that led to the main city. He created this narrow road to force any approaching party to travel in a single column, and he posted many watchtowers every hundred yards to create the most secure roads in the world. Sozin was also the man who glorified hunting dragons, and he made this a tradition in the Fire Nation. If a firebender proved to be able to kill a dragon, the original firebenders, he would be showered with glory and praise. This unfortunately led to the dragon's near extinction however, and it was Sozin's grandson Iroh who put a stop to it, claiming that he had killed the last dragon, when this was not actually the case, ensuring the remaining dragon's safety. As Sozin's reign carried on, and the war escalated, Sozin established the royal family to be almost like celebrities, and many monuments of them were constructed, and were meant to be worshipped by Fire Nation citizens. This would change how the Fire Nation was run, and it would go on to be this way long after he was gone. 
Sozin also ensured that Fire Nation history always made himself and the royal family look good. This made the textbooks kids in the Fire Nation studied for school all say that the Air Nomads fought back and Sozin defeated them, rather than have the book tell the truth that Sozin ambushed them, and the fact that the Air Nomads could not have fought back as they had no army because they were pacifists. On top of that, Sozin ordered the Dragonbone Catacombs to be sealed off, so that this way, all Fire Nation history records before his reign would be erased, making it appear that Fire Nation history began with himself. A very narcissistic, but fascinating thing to do. We also just recently discovered that Sozin outlawed same-sex relationships. Sozin died at the age of 102, and it was rumored that he lived to be older due to the influences of Sozin's comet. Everybody in the Fire Nation understood that he died peacefully in his sleep, but before he died, he wrote down his final testament, and as his own life was dimming, he thought about his dark and evil life and looked to his past as a time that was brighter. When this was stated, what was shown was him messing around and having fun with Roku, meaning he might have some regrets about Roku and the fate he forced upon his old friend. Nevertheless, in the end, he died a very old and successful man. Sozin changed so much in the world, and whether it be seen as good or bad change, he nevertheless left a huge stamp on the world. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe and look out for more great videos on the way.